Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, wind a little strip of bacon around the potatoes. Wind a strip of bacon around the bacon and eggs, they're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell, just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beet, you pickle them, and carrot, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, Cross cut the slices and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad cut them the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers, lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champagne Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. 
You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons, makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies, if you ever do get it, you thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that? That machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grader. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horseradish. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go around the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can no harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Catch a hold of the pie pan like this while you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhard cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions, 
The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice. Evening, everyone. How we doing tonight? What's new? What's happening? It's been a couple of nights. Uh, welcome back, Leo Zio. So, uh, tonight we have our challenge ingredient, which is taro root. Uh, unfortunately, I was only able to find the small guys, but um, it's still taro root. Smaller guys tend to be actually going to be a bit harder for me to work with here, So, but they tend to be a little bit more slimy from just my studying on this in the last couple days. Um, typically, you want to try and find the larger ones, at least for what I assume a lot of Americans would want to be doing this with is using it for the starch, because the bigger it is, the larger, the, the more, more starch it's going to have. Nice, Beef Wellington. It has been a while since I've been doing that, and I've, I've said a couple of times I sort of want to undertake that at some point, uh, but I also want to make my own puff pastry. I, I just don't want to buy, like, uh stuff out of the freezer. I've used freezer puff pastry and for the vast majority of it that's a great thing time saver because it's not really worth your while to take that amount of time to get the effect from butter. Um, although if you do make it at home, you're making it with butter. <laughs> um, anyways, so that's something I'd like to do at some point, but I want to do the puff pastry for that dish if I'm going the whole Wellington. Uh, hopefully it turned out great for you. Yes, you said great success. Awesome. Awesome. It's an even better option. Saves you the time and you get a quality product too. And you help support a small business. Okay, so how do I want to start going about tonight? I don't know even which one of these I want to start with. I think I might actually, uh, we're going to do both a, uh, curry, words, um, <coughs> or masala, but we're going to use this instead of the protein equivalent, and, uh, then I'm also going to do pastillas, um, which are like paste candies uh, out of these. So I'm debating here which of the two recipes I want to start with. I sort of want to do the pastillas for us first. I'm probably butchering the term of that. I, I was horrible in Spanish. I tried, but anyways. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and do those. I think those are probably going to be the best started first because they're going to need to cool down. Okay. We're going to do slightly less than this recipe, if I remember. So I am pretty much following a recipe tonight for both of these. Um, I'm going to wing the curry a little bit. Make sure to have cold ones. Sorry at the time delay. I moved on to other things and forgot what I was talking about. 
So we're going to start by boiling these guys about a cup or a cup and a half here worth. Hmm. Give my pan a wash here. It doesn't seem very clean to me. Hey, Uberman. Welcome in, Tahiti lady. Oh, hopefully you're feeling better now, Uberman. So we're going to start by boiling three of these guys. Nice. These two we're going to save for our curry later. And it's actually probably about right. I'm shooting for uh, about one cup there after I get rid of peeling it and all that stuff. Um, that may be closer to cup and a half, but that way I can be a little bit lazier with uh, making sure it's all nice and clean and good parts. Um, then I'm going to blend that with uh, condensed milk and uh, mix that up with a whole bunch of sugar. Okay. Um, so let's switch over to the curry here while those are getting boiling. And actually, I'm going to switch these over to the second burner here and actually put a flame under them. Hey, that'd be good. We want to boil them, don't we? Sorry for the screech. And these I'm going to just peel by hand. Or by knife. Oops. A little thick there. These are the smaller ones. Ideally, since I'm using these for starch things, I would have wanted the larger ones, but this is what was available. I said that earlier, but I think people are filtering in here. But those unfamiliar here with taro, it's a uh, starchy, uh, I want to call it root, but it's, it's um, got a different term, quorum. Of a taro plant, or there's many names, there's 
several names just for this. Such as Arby or um, Colacasa, Casia. Nice. Kalo? I can never tell how to properly pronounce uh, Hawaii terms. And so, as said before, these are a little bit slimy. They're a little bit they're, they're releasing liquid and the larger ones are going to have less of that going on. The smaller guys like this are going to have more of it. A little bit of purple to this one. Like it almost wants to be a purple one. They're typically either purple or white inside. And I don't have any food dye, which is going to make our pastillas a little, perhaps, uh, dull and not so bright colored. These are taro root, which is our this week's ch challenge ingredient you guys voted for. Which I'll be starting a new vote tonight in the Discord based off the Ingredient Suggestions channel. Hey, Miss Lisa Face. Welcome in. So how are you tonight, Miss Lisa Face? And then this I'm just going to slice into medallions that I can do a little bit of a sear with. And we'll look decent in our curry. And bigger pieces we'll slice in half first.
Nice, nice. Seems like everyone's having a pretty good day today. That's awesome. going over here. Turn on the camera so you guys can actually see what's going on over here. A little oil in the pan. Just uh, sunflower, the cooking oil I typically use. Let me check here, Huberman, if I've got you, got everyone with proper permissions here. I do have to give people permission, so when you just first, first join, that is all you see, Huberman. But, uh, I used to have a bot doing it, and it cut out on me, and I haven't gotten around to getting that fixed again. But that will be fixed in the future. <coughs> but right now I just check it after the stream. towel before the handle's not even hot. Come on, coat the pan. Let me turn the fan on low here. I've already got the bedroom door closed. these all down on one side because we're essentially just searing these. Carefully use the spat to bring the first batch over here. The second I just grab with my hands. on the rest, although I'm a little worried. I'm, I haven't worked with this before. I don't know if it oxidizes like potato does or a lot of starchy products do. I get the feeling like it probably will, and so I'm wanting to get that on the pan so it starts cooking and sort of locks in its color. Nice, Leozio. You're making all sorts of stuff. You you work professionally cooking stuff or just doing all this uh, stuff for uh, home and friends? Uh, I mean, beef wellington and uh, fudge walnut crust uh, fudge bars. Not where we are. 
we want a bit more cooking. And we should salt all of this. Don't know if salting this is traditional, but it's just built into me at this point. You put something in the pan that needs salt. Nicely as you. I'm gonna grab myself some water. I'm gonna let those come up to a. I'm gonna let those come up to a nice full boil. They're they're boiling now, but they're not like a full boil yet. That seems to be a big one for Christmas. A lot of people make fudge for Christmas. My aunt makes fudge every year for Christmas, too. Now I'm thinking we can flip some of those pieces of taro there. Let's see what we got going here. Yeah. Now we got some nice searing action going. Tongs don't want to work with me tonight for some reason. Turn the heat off on these guys over there. Transfer these as they're finished up here onto a little longer. Got a place here. I'm just going to hot hold them. We're going to make the rest of our curry in the same pan here. Just building flavor. As usual,
add these guys to the pan here. And I'm going to cut the heat on that for the moment because it's getting a little hot, a little too smoky for me. Let's do our Bethel. See if the rogue can get to the houses before too many things take a swipe at it. Yeah, it's nearly dead. We got this though. I think we lucked out on that one. Victory. Congrats, Leozio. I will point out that, uh, Flag carriers don't stack, and so whichever has got the highest level is going to take the stuff for the area. Let's see here. Just put my rogue out there, see what we get going on. What alerts are you uh, referring to, Huberman? I didn't know that I was having issues with any of my alerts there. I knew I was having issues with myself hearing my alerts and my earbud. And it's, it's Bluetooth being wonky on me. I think. Nice bun buns. Welcome in. I am not familiar with working with Taro, so this is a. I, I knew it existed and have seen uses of it, but I've never worked with it myself, so new experience for me here. I've had taro root. I haven't cooked it. It can be white or purple. Get the stuff out of the way of potentially near boiling water here. Use the lid of the pan just to pour that off. Whoa, 
Well, there's a reason why they're called eggplants, Huberman. Um, even though majority of them these days are purple, at least here in the States, the, it's they used to be egg. They used to be, like, small egg-shaped, too. Um... But there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've made like our own. Like I I touched on on how in the fifties we turned chickens from something that laid eggs into a meat source for us um, by essentially breeding them for their meat. Um, and uh, carrots carrots used to be all sorts of different colors. At least here in the States, unless you're going and buying a like premium bunch of carrots, um, they're going to be all orange. And that's because the House of Orange. And... It's sort of funny because most of the commercial color carrots I don't think have any decent flavor here in the States. pan here. I'll let this hang out here. I'm going to start in on the rest of our goodness here. We need... Do we have any garlic heading down here? Nope? Okay. I'm going to start with some ginger. Just going to grate that. I didn't do it. Actually, I don't know if the audio caught that or not. Nice. Well, I am certainly not a curry expert to go along with uh, the Tara. There's a couple other streamers that I would probably say are much more experienced, but I like giving everything a little bit of a try. A lot of people will take the peel off on their ginger root I generally don't bother anymore to be honest in most applications that I've had taro it's been rather flavorless it's it's a starchy um, it's not a root but it's root like and uh, yeah it's generally starch like it's not let's see how much do we want of this that's okay we're 
We're going to add some garlic to the party. Let's see if this is sealed. Yep. Got a new thing, garlic powder. Got tired of trying to scrape out of that little container. Adding some cumin. And I'm finishing off this bottle of uh, paprika into this mix as well. Well, maybe I'm finishing off. There we go. Let's do that. Um, more to be added to this future. We need onion. Yeah, I've made stuffed cabbage. Um, it's been a while since I did that, but that was last year on stream. Yeah, I had a period there where I was getting a whole bunch of cabbage and I was needing to come up with different ways to use it. Nice bun buns. Thank you for that. Follow Sukoi or Sui Kotu. Uh, lost on that one, sorry. But welcome in, glad to have you. Doing my weekly ingredient challenge. I hold weekly votes in my Discord. This week we've uh, got Taro Root as our. Uh, challenge and so I'm working on making both a dessert and dinner using taro root as an ingredient thinking I should go back to working on that dessert though because we need to get that cooked and cooling Yeah, let's go ahead and work on our dessert here. We have these three pieces of taro root that I boiled. Now we're going to peel these, or I'm going to use my knife to cut the outsides off. And it's alright that they're not completely cooked because these are going to get cooked further here with the sugar. I think this step was mostly just to make peeling and cleaning them a little bit easier. It is certainly 
very potato-like when it's cooked here. It's very starchy. It's very um, like I could probably pretty easily mash that like a mashed potato right now. Don't know if we have any new votes in the ingredient suggestion channel in the Discord. But when I was looking, it was looking like I was going to have to put uh, activated charcoal in there on the list um, for the vote this week. Could be an interesting one. Black food for dinner. I get the impression from a couple places on this if you maybe boil these even more the skin will practically just pop off but it's coming off pretty easy as it is Yeah, but this is a bit like uh, peeling a boiled potatoes right now, or a boiled potato. You can see it actually almost like pulls off if I wasn't too lazy to just slice it. Yes, you are, Huberman. Please, please do. Um, and please feel free to uh, add your own reactions to any of the ones down there with the uh, chef uh, reaction there. Um, all you have to do is click on them because I add my own to all of them. Um, and that way you can vote for everything once, even the main vote. You can vote for both things in the main vote, um, but you can only vote for things once. So... sort of a jury-rigged uh, voting system, but it's worked so far. Let's take a look at how our Stream Raiders battle is coming together here. Uh, we don't have much going on here. We need uh, 
couple rogues up here, guys. If you guys have a character to place. Up here, we need a couple rogues. Quick, take out that house before it uh, pops up a whole bunch of stuff for us to fight. Okay. So we got these. We're going to blend this. This is actually a bit much. This is about what I want. I'm going to call this extra. And then if you remember... I used some, uh, this board's dirty now anyways, um, condensed milk the other night. So we're going to finish off that can of condensed milk. Glad to have you. This is my first time attempting to make this. But I've seen them before and had them before. Or at least, I don't know if it's necessarily taro root ones that I've had or one of the other types of starches done in a similar fashion. Hmm. My captions don't seem to be running. What's going on here? Let's try that. That didn't change anything either. Weird. That's right. It's probably got the wrong microphone selected. Let's see here. Yeah, that would be the wrong thing. Actually, there we go. So, there we go, yeah. Just had the wrong microphone selected. So we're going to give this a blend up.
There we go. So now that's blended up nicely. I had you muted there, Tahiti Lady, so that you didn't have to hear the blender. But we now have our taro root and our condensed milk um, blended. So we'll move back to using this guy again. Boil them in. It's a good one to continue our project here. We'll pour this into there. So we have our partially cooked taro root with our condensed milk. Sort of blended. Guess we got a piece there that didn't get blended while well. the rest of it seemed nice and smooth. Oh well, we'll go with it. I'm going to put this on a low flame. And this is going to thicken up on us. And then we're going to add sugar to it after that to make it even thicker. I don't know if you're gonna fit in there nice. Nope, you're not. Guess I'll use the quarter cup. Get the powdered sugar off the side there as that warms up. Nice. toss these guys out too. I haven't seen any videos or anything on this and so I'm guessing at a little bit of this at this point. Uh, Supposed to be cooking this until we're up to a near dry consistency. And then we're going to be putting that into, I don't know, what sort of container do I want to put this in? But in a greased container. So let's get that ready ahead of time. And how thick are we there? might be a little too small. Let's do pipe. <coughs> <coughs> What 
I do with my butter. I use all my butter up. Staring me in the face is typical. That didn't fly very straight. moving this one is not something you want to let sit Over here, sort of quick trying to coat a pan here with butter for me to pour this mixture into once it's fully done. But we're not there yet, but I should be stirring it right now. I should have had this done before going to cooking this. was quick. That one just seemed to fly by today. Let's do our battle. house here though. Gret's q us too. Skep test with the kills. Gret's guys. And if you guys haven't noticed, there's a little quest thing down here now. And uh, I've got this first one collected, so let's collect that and move on to the next one. You guys may already have one or two of these done if you didn't know this menu was over here. They'll give you some extra rewards that's new in this last patch. You got some upgrades here to do. Check out the store real quick. Decide that I don't really want any of these. Nope. Alright. Next battle. And I'm going to put my rogue right up here in this top corner. And do rogues in this bottom corner. In the top corner. And let's put our fighting forces here. Next to this guy. Um, and uh, they'll get the buff to go after everything else. The rogues would go after trying to knock down as many of these factories as possible. And then uh, we have, if we have another buildup of forces here, they'll knock out this uh, power-up thing and everything in that little bubble there is uh, going to get a buff. Alright, back to the stove here, where we're continuing to cook our taro root and uh, condensed milk. We're supposed to be cooking this until it's completely thickened here. You can add in, you can separate this into several batches at this point. If you got food coloring, you can make them all different colors 
and uh, and then pour them individually into your pans. You can mix them all together and make them all sorts of different colors. Trying to keep things moving. You notice you got a little sticking going on to the pan here that I'm trying to work by constantly moving the moisture parts over the top of it to recollect it before it burns. Still gonna get that a little bit longer because that taro wasn't completely cooked when I was done boiling it there. It was about oh 60% the way there. Like it had a good cook on the exteriors, but you see I've gotten a lot of that up, it's still a little bit there, but And of course, the more you cook this, also not just drying it out, but that starches are the heat to a minor, minor degree probably are breaking down those uh, starches a little bit. Nice, Miss Lisa face. Miss Lisa Face, I, I think uh, in, instead of food coloring at this point, a, another great alternative to turn this into a great dessert would be to use uh, some yellow mustard. Give it great yellow color. Work awesome. Or even better yet, uh, give you some more advice here. This would work pretty well too. I'm gonna use that a little bit later here for our curry. So you can see I've worked basically all of that that was stuck and starting to color a little bit back off of the pan by stirring it there. Just a little elbow grease. I did turn up the heat here, so this is cooking again a bit quicker. Now that I'm paying attention to it again.
give it a lovely color. You don't want to put it in everything. You know what else would be awesome in this? Going along with uh, my advice to uh, Miss Lisa Face is uh, I, I still got this stuff around. If you remember this. Add some protein to her pistillas. <laughs> there you go, Miss Lisa Face. Second guess there. That's the leftover cricket flower I had from two weeks ago. This is oddly smelling very potato-like right now, or very mashed potato-like, which I guess sort of makes sense since it's starch and condensed milk, so it's like that buttery mashed potato-like smell. No, I think I'm probably done with those. I was sort of keeping around for the lulls, or maybe if I had some other billions, but I don't know if I'm going to use those for anything. Um, the actual flavor of the crickets is not that bad. It's sort of nutty, a nutty, little bit earthy, but the scent, the aroma off of it is like near identical to fish food. And I just, the aroma, no thank you. So, well, I assume the diets, if you look online, a lot of people re recommend uh, feeding fish pellets if you're going to grow crickets, like if you have lizards or something like that. A lot of people grow crickets, and uh, they suggest feeding them uh, fish pellets. And so, I doubt they're feeding them fish pellets from the place that I bought them. But I wouldn't be shocked if their diet is quite similar. And so... We are now getting there pretty close. Getting nice and gummy and sticky. Hard to move around in the pan compared to when we started. Okay, I think we're here. We're starting to get a little color change from the reduction. I think we're good. I'm gonna cut the heat on that now, and I'm going to add in a half cup 
here of powdered sugar. That was a quarter cup. Shock me with crickets. sugar everywhere whenever you use this stuff it, it's just let's see am I supposed to heat this further with the okay I am supposed to continue cooking this although it is basically dry at this point correct. This is probably like napalm now and you don't really want to touch it too too much. It is pretty warm. It's not quite boiling though so I don't know if it'll really be a problem but let's get all that off the bottom here once again. this time. Yeah, not fun. Don't do that. That didn't burn me, but it very easily could have. And very, very easily could burn you guys. So what do you do, toss them outside or something? So we're going to let this chill out and cool down and thicken up a little bit more. And we'll go back to doing our curry.
and I need to get this pan cleaned up so I can make some rice to go with our curry. cases where it's quicker to clean it by doing a quick boil here. <coughs> that water is filthy because that it's got all my uh, dish cleaner stuff in there and all that stuff. We bring that up to a boil and we had trying to be, I was not cooking that very hot. And so those starches are all seized. The sugar is nice and solid. And so giving a quick boil here with some water will both allow it to dilute and uh, loosen it all up. Well, we get our onions going here while we're waiting though. Add a bit more oil to this pan. I just like onion, so I'm probably over onioning our curry here tonight but hey it's my curry um i don't want to say no to that miss lisa face but at the same time um i doubt it's going to be substantial enough to be worth your while Because, like I was saying before, with salt and pasta water and stuff like that, it's not really... You want to add salt because you want flavor, and you don't want to cook something without any flavor whatsoever. But the idea that that salt is substantially changing the temperature of your boiling water, which scientifically it does slightly raise it, um, but the actual result is probably not worth your time. There we go, pretty much completely clean now. Gotta go back over this, but my soap sponge, my soap scrubby, but we've broken all the dirt up off of the surface now. Two little spots I missed there. Back over with some soap. Those onions are smelling great. Oh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and add the turmeric to our spice pile here too. Why are things getting bound up? There's nothing. My spices are all getting trapped in the drawer, even though. What the hell? There's nothing. I, I emptied half of the stuff out of this drawer the other day. Now they're all catching on not wanting to open back up. Add our turmeric as well. It is a uh, broiled marinated lamb that's been skewered. That was the last word there, uh, Miss Lisa Face. I don't know if I salted these onions. We need some salt on our onions since they're in the pan. Let's get rid of those powdered sugar before we cook it on the counter. Let's see what else we need for our curry here. Do I have everything in here? Everything but the time. And these, which got some canned tomatoes since it's dead of winter. Maybe if you're in Southern California or I haven't changed the temp on that pan if you've noticed the difference in how much noise it's putting out. Nice Miss Lisa face. So we're getting there with our... It's not exactly pouring. So I think we might be okay with this once this cools down a little bit more. But if you notice this, this has quieted down and it's because we've worked the majority of the moisture out of the onions now 
and uh, we don't have a ton of oil in there anymore. Although they are still glossy, there's enough oil to keep cooking them. So you're saying a thousand sprinkles to a cupcake? That's not a horrible ratio in my mind. So I'll add in all these lovelies here, all the spices and uh, ginger that I had in here. We got garlic, we got ginger, we got a whole bunch of uh, uh, red pepper or paprika powder in there. Uh, we got our turmeric. Add these to our onions. Give them a little cook time. You can already smell a little bit of that. Need to give these a good stir here, though. How close are we getting on our battle here? We gotta be getting close. Now we got all those spices in there. Add our diced tomatoes, which the recipe calls for grated, but They want both the tomato and the onion in this basically disappearing, cooking down to mush. Um, I'm not going to appease that. I'm going to leave a little flavor here. This is one I brought up before in chat, but is it still a cupcake if it's frosted? I mean, is it still a muffin if it's frosted? Or is it now a cupcake? I mean, because I'm sitting here thinking of, uh, especially since you brought up lemon poppy, that's, that, that's like the epitome of the muffin that I think of that you find at the local coffee stand and it's got that glaze coating of lemon over the top of it the sizzle bottle okay we're gonna let that simmer away here. We'll do our battle and then we're going to make some simple rice. See how we do with our battle here. are running away with it. Nice. Victory. I steal the kills. QNS2 gets the assists. And Leo Zoo and QNS2 with the rewards. Gretz. Ooh, scrolls from me. Berserker and Rogue Scrolls. Nice. Um, I don't know if we can go up here. Can we go up here? Well, let's, because otherwise I want to go for the gold chest, but I want to go for that loyalty chest up there too. Um, let's go for this one. See what we get. Hope we can go back up top. I'm going to have my Berserker here for some damage, but the rogues are going to get all the kills here again, guys. Going for all those chests. So. 
do you want a little support from my berserker to go after that dragon, but you guys are going to get the points there with the rogues. So that's going nicely. I'm going to turn that down a little bit just to allow that to sort of like simmer. Rice. I have to keep reminding myself apparently. Don't need a ton of rice just for me, so just gonna do a cup of dry rice here. And I found that rinsing this particular rice has not been of a great advantage, and so I'm skipping that. Though in general, you do wanna rinse your wife rice often several times. Just gonna do water and a little soy and a little oil just my normal cooking oil not doing this for flavor doing it just for a little fat in there MSG and pepper. Turn that on. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you, Leozio. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, good question, Miss Lisa Face. Because I spent the better part of year and a half streaming to uh, try and get two mics working in here and I just gave up I'm still tempted to add a like very directional mic over the stove to get, you know, premium sizzle. But I'm, I'm mildly okay with the current setup for right now. I mean, changing things from here means money most likely. So. Thank you, Miss Lisa Face. I'm gonna go ahead and add this time in there.
Got our rice coming up to a boil here. We'll cut that off and let that sit for a good 10 minutes here. Yeah, a lot of it's type of mic, a lot of it, I think I just sort of lucked out here. Especially considering I bought the microphones used, and you can bang up and mess up a microphone. this down at this point we're gonna add some more water and moisturize re liquefy turn this into a nice sauce and we're gonna add this in there like we would our protein and use this as our main part to that what are they using this We'll finish with this after we're done with our masala. <laughs> Tahiti lady. No alcohol tonight. No alcohol tonight, no meat tonight. Yeah, if you guys are noticing, it's a little unusual for me, but this is a vegetarian dinner tonight. We, we got some uh, dairy here in our dessert, but uh, otherwise we're uh, almost vegan. Okay, now I'm going to add two cups of water. to a boil and we'll let that simmer for a couple minutes and then we'll add in our taro root for that in the meantime let's see if we can't toy with these guys I don't have color for them, but I do have colored sugar. A 
The idea is from here, they're supposed to be grabbed only one bowl, need two bowls here. Nice. We'll do one with red and we'll do one with green. That's what I got. I have put them in here so that, uh, you know, because they're all culinary terms, and so they can spark, spark a little uh, conversation on what they mean, too. So let's see how these work. See if we got a something that's usable here in the sugar. I think this might be still a little too soft. Let's see if we need to, uh, I think we're gonna have to try and throw this in the fridge. Let's give this little worm-like guy a shot here. Leo. Those aren't bad. They're they're sweet. They're gummy. Um The sugar definitely adds a nice little crunch to the outside of them. Um but I do think they need to set up a little bit more. So I'm going to throw this in the fridge. This might be a uh, Instagram special there. Because I think that's going to need a little bit of time there to set up. See how we're looking on our battles. Get another 15 minutes on our battle. So I think this will be the last battle of the evening here. Wrap things up here with our curry. Set these off to the side for the rest of that project a little later. Need to give our board a quick wig down here. We've had all sorts of stuff all over our board here this evening. And I haven't sanitized it at all. did get the chance to oil it here if you guys notice the board is a bit darker again um, now I gotta wax it here
rice should be just about done here. I think we're going to break out wooden, one of the wooden bowls tonight. I call them wooden bowls, but they're 1970s, I think. Um, or maybe even earlier. But they're, they're like glued sawdust, I think. <laughs> I like them though, they look decent. They've served me well over many years. The two L's are throwing me off there. Go ahead and add our taro back into our curry mixture. Or rather into our curry mixture after we steered it in this pan long ago, 90 minutes ago or so. Yeah, those those would be wipes, uh, Miss Lisa Face. I, I had uh, quite the inventory to start off last year, and actually have not bought any. I, I lucked out on all my paper products. I had basically just bought a good amount of all my paper products before things got crazy around here. onion for garnish here. More about the green onion for, I think for Sunday. Got a couple of nice dinners coming up here. I uh, got hot buttered rum day on Sunday, but I'm also going to roast the chicken and make some potatoes. So that should be a nice fun night. And I'm blanking on what I'm doing here on Friday. But I remember that being a fun theme tonight too. Just a little bit there for garnish our plate. I turned the curry off at this point. It's just hanging out. Let's take a look at our rice here. I get ourselves a appropriate rice fluff and knife fork here. And then properly throw it on the floor. That's the way you do it. Hey car guy, how's your evening going? Welcome in. So we got our soy, water, rice here.
just some good heavy umami flavor no real almost looks like there's some stock involved there but that's just soy sauce giving us a little color I think I want to add a bit more salt to that rice actually. And our tower root curry. We got enough sauce here for a bit more. Now I saw some big ones here that I wanted to remove out of our strays, but the rest of these are looking pretty nice. That's yeah, good for that. Don't want to pile it on um, with green onion. Save that for probably round two. <laughs> Grab ourselves a picture of this for the Instagrams. There we go. Let's give this a try. See what this is like. Smothered in all sorts of lovely seasonings. We got our tar root and a little. Oh, well, we got a mess is what we got now, but a little tomato, a little tar root. Not bad. Uh, a little more like plantain like in flavor than I sort of remembered. So it's starchy, but it's got a little bit of that like banana y type uh, starch to it. Well, it's going to be slightly, it's starch, and starch is basically complex sugar. And so. Any of the flavors that we broke down are going to break down to some sweetness. We got some sweetness here from the onions. Um, ginger is really kicking in here. Actually overpowering some of the other flavors I would think are typical for a curry. Oh, it's good stuff. I'm going to enjoy all this tonight. This is going to be tasty. But I am thinking this needs a bit more salt as well. <laughs> I put salt on everything. That was a bit much, but... The plantains are just... Or <laughs> plantains. The taro, like, uh, like plantains or like uh, potato, are just soaking up a lot of that. Oh yeah, salt definitely helped there.
now that I've completely destroyed this. Let's clean that up a little bit, add a bit more greenage. Give you guys a look here on the main cam, because I forgot to do that earlier. Better color on this camera, so. Ray Price early recording CD album today. Wow. Nice. That early I would... I don't know, it seems to come and go which, which media people love. Let's give this, uh, paste, or pistita, second shot here. It may be just this loose. It may be just the, or it may be that I got the ratio wrong and it's a little too soft and sticky. It does seem to be a little bit more, uh, Solid now. But I think you guys get the idea here. This is a little bit like a uh, sweet mashed potatoes coated in sugar here. Or pestiers. So this is our dessert tonight, made with uh, condensed milk, powdered sugar, and uh, colored sugar. I mean, it's, it's, it's tasty. It's a cute little thing. I think I, I got these a little too loose, even though they're solidifying up. We'll see if these uh, look a little bit better here if they cool down a little bit more. So we're going to throw these back in the fridge. Let's see how we're doing on our battle here. Oh, just about time to start. Nice. Let's see how we fare. I think we got this one. Pether with Pether 1 uh, with the kills, QNS2 with the sis, had Mama Bear and QNS2 with the gold. Congrats, everyone. We will start on this on Friday evening. I'm going to go enjoy this. Let's see who we can give a raid to tonight. I already got someone picked out here. Oops.
Thank you guys for joining me here tonight. I'm going to go and enjoy this loveliness. I'm uh, going to send you guys off here to Very Silly Hats. He was the creator of the majority of my emotes. Uh, does pixel art. Um, he's been working on a bunch of commissions lately. Really great guy. Uh, hope you have some fun. And uh, have a good night. Be back here on Friday with more deliciousness. Thank you for joining me tonight. <laughs>